Right. With Aaron Rodgers, the train's pulling into the station. That's right. Far closer to the end than the beginning. Yep. You're going to give up a year? You're going to give up half a year? You know, the Carson Palmer situation is the one that gets mentioned most often in comparison to Rodgers because Palmer was done with the Bengals. The owner was hard-headed. The owner said, go ahead and rot. I don't care. And he sat and he sat and he sat until a fluke broken collarbone yeah. suffered by Jason Campbell opened the door to multiple first-round picks. Problem solved. But to get there, Carson Palmer had to sit out six weeks of the season. Does Rodgers even want to do that? Does he want to miss one game given that he's only got four years left? So whatever this plan is, if it entails playing in 2021 – they 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 need to they need to do something more, I yeah. think, to get the point across. And this gets back to the message I've been sending ever since Thursday, Friday, when this all first came up. You got to tell us what you want. You got to let everyone know what you want. I, Mike, you can't I'm play with these you. Games anymore. I'm you got to say what you want. Yeah. If you're gonna get what you want, you got to say what you want. Yeah. That that's right. I, I, that I, that to me is where it's the biggest question of the whole the whole scenario. I mean, I, I'm with you. I think that's it. You've kind of said this for a long, long time. I give you a lot of credit. I, I mean, I think your read is right. Yeah, Rodgers is that kind of guy that he, he doesn't want to be the bad guy. He doesn't want to do that. Well, okay, that's fine and dandy. But for right now in this situation, the way you just explained it, like is Rodgers willing to get his hands dirty and like kind of look like a jerk? for a little while with the Green Bay Packer fan base and everything like that to basically force a move somewhere else. Is he willing to do that? And, and, and I really don't know. It's, it's odd. Like I felt like, I felt like with Deshaun Ro Watson or Russell Wilson, like I, I, I had a feeling of like, you know what, when they need to be the bad guy, they'll do it. I don't know if Rogers has it in them to do it. And that, that's the big question. How, what do you feel about that? I think he'll do what he ever has to do to do? pander to the fans. Yeah, I think, okay. he'll, I think so. he will do some major league pandering to the fans at the appropriate time, whether that's financial contributions, billboards, open letters in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, okay. whatever he has to do. It'll but, be a political campaign where he panders to the fans and bends over backwards to get them on his side. But do you I think, think he'll go scorched coming. earth, though? Do you think he'll go scorched earth on Green Bay, though, to make that happen and kind of force their hand and really go like, hey, I'm I'm done, I'm serious, I'm out of here, I don't want to do that? You know, he's going to have to say some of those things publicly, too, and probably make this a little bit messier and then do what you said. And I'm just not sure if he's willing to do that first part. Like, what do you think about that? I think that's his nuclear option that he's yeah. he's moving his finger to closer. The yeah, right, right. But I'm not sure he's ever going to press uh -huh. it. Uh-huh. Right. I, yeah. I'm not sure he's ever going to do it. He wants to try to get out without half having to actually go that far because at that point it really does increase the possibility that fans will turn on him no matter what he does to pander to them. And I think that that's where the Packers are calling his bluff the most. It's not just go ahead and sit out. It's yeah. go ahead go ahead and go scorched earth. We dare you yeah, to right. take us on. We're the Packers, community owned. You take on us, you're taking on the fans necessarily. Anyone who has that framed stock certificate on the wall in their den you're taking them on, too. That's how I could see the Packers couching it and just daring him to turn it into a big fight because they ultimately think he won't because that's the read they have on him. That's I still think Mark Murphy's the guy who's the puppet master here, working this thing out, keeping Aaron Rodgers just upset enough so he plays well, but not so upset that he upsets the apple cart. And now he's trying to upset the apple cart, and Murphy thinks he won't do it. When push comes to shove, you won't do it. However teammates are starting to get the message Devonte adams a cryptic tweet from monday but you know either he's sending a message about the situation or he's completely and totally tone deaf to the broader circumstances of his life right now and that happens from time to time with athletes they claim oh i wasn't talking about that 600 pound block of limburger cheese sitting in the living room even though i was got to appreciate what you got while you got it Devonte adams said possibly a message to himself he <laughs> seriously Rogers that's what i was yeah, right yeah you know <laughs> or or a message to packers fans i mean multiple <laughs> levels and layers of message chris complicated by the fact that aaron Rodgers saw that tweet and he's one of the 53,000 plus who clicked the like button boom so uh 
Yes. Yeah. See, it, it's gonna it's gonna continue to play this way for Aaron Rodgers. He's gonna try to do it. Just be an irritant. Yeah. Just He's passive aggressive and as agitate. you said. Agitate. Yeah. Yes. And and all it takes is that one day that Mark yeah. Murphy says, "All right, I, I've had, I've just had enough. I'm too old for this crap. Let's just look. We're gonna feel better to be done with this guy because he's never gonna come at us the way that we want. It's gonna constantly be sniping and these backhanded comments. You're right. And he's gonna be stirring and 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 I think he's hoping to shake their resolve. And then there will be a point. And I'm sure he's got it all mapped out." All planned out. He had last Thursday planned out. He's he's probably got various steps and strategies up until the first day of training camp, up until the first day of the regular season, up until the trade deadline. I'm sure he's got it all mapped out and all planned out. See, that's when everyone thinks you're really smart, they're going to assume that you're really smart, and they're going to assume that you're really calculated, that you're strategic, and I consider that a compliment. Yeah. you got to have a plan for your life. Sure. And I think Aaron Rodgers has a plan for this season – and he's working his way through the steps. Whoop. And I think he's he's in the, let's just irritate them as much as I can so they'll throw their hands in the air and trade. It does seem like, yeah, he's in that phase. I mean, I I'm, I'm, I agree with you in the fact that he probably does have a little, yeah, some some sort of plan, a plan of attack here. There's no doubt. Here, here's one that I keep coming back to in this whole situation, Mike. And maybe you got a good thought on it or you know something that I don't. But, like, where – well, why why do this now? Why why do it now? That's where I come back to it. To where, like at first, I didn't want to believe maybe Rodgers was behind some of this stuff that got released, uh, you know, late last week and all of that. My my tune has changed, obviously. But what I'm just like confused about from his side of this, right? And you know, you don't want to be there. Why why do it at the draft? And I know there's the Jordan Love last year, and maybe it's payback, but if you really want out of there, why not make this known as soon as the season was over? You know, you would have had lots of options and things like that and really been able to figure out or steer your boat in the direction you wanted to go as far as the team you wanted to play for. I mean, he really closed some options out. I have a hard time thinking like, hey, the New England Patriots, would they have been involved with Aaron Rodgers if they knew he was available, you know, late February, early March? I, I bet you they would have. He would have had a whole bunch of other options. That's where I don't get it from his his camp or his side, Mike. Well, I think the Rams are the most significant example yeah, there. You, and yeah. remember, mm -hmm. two things. Sam Farmer of the LA Times reported that the Rams called the Packers and the Packers shot that down because – they didn't want it to become a thing the way right. Russell Wilson was a thing at the right. same time. And number two, at one point, Les Snead used the phrase beautiful mystery in a different context altogether. You are right. Thinking, What's he up to? What's he up to? <laughs> You're right. I remember this. I, I think this, and this comes back to the point we were just discussing a few minutes ago about when and if Aaron Rodgers is willing to go scorched earth and be the bad guy. I think his plan from end of season – until draft yeah. was to try to make it all happen quietly and behind the scenes without it becoming public, right. without it looking like he's the one that wanted out. And I also think that part of that was so he could stake out some real estate if he got traded, say, wasn't me, wasn't me, uh, I, wasn't me, wasn't me. I didn't do it. I didn't ask for it. Right. You know, I, 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 would that surprise us? No. If that was what the plan was and he does get traded and he acts like, hey, you know, they're just they're just implementing their plan. They we all knew this day was coming the moment they drafted Jordan Love. I mean, there'd be something he could say to spin it back around on them. And they're not going to get into a street fight with him, especially after they've traded him. He'll be able to say whatever he wants. Yeah, you're right. So I think that was the plan. Three months to get them to do it. And they kept digging in. You know, they went out there three times, I, I'm told. I mean, it three sounds at least. Three times they yeah, went out there. Right. Yeah. Maybe more to try to get his feathers unruffled. And he, you know, he, he held firm. And, and I think they, they called his bluff. Maybe they knew. Yeah. Maybe he told them, hey, guys, here's how it's going to go down. You don't trade me. You're going to find out. First day of the draft. It's all going to hit. Just mark my words. It's all going to hit that I want out. Get ready for it. I'm giving you fair notice. You're going to have a distraction that gets dropped right on your plate as you're getting ready for the draft. This is all going to start to come out. 
You have until then to make it happen. If it doesn't happen by then, the world is going to know that I want out. And they may have thought, baloney, baloney, you're not going to do that. We know how you operate. Now, now, look, this is far more candid of a communication here than maybe what they had. It was far more subtle, I assume. But it, the, the events would tend to suggest that he had that plan in mind. He gave them that three months to do it. They didn't do it, and he acted on his threat. Now the question is, what else is he threatened to do? And will they continue to not believe that he'll keep doing it? And I think that's why we're at that point where are, are, are they going to call his bluff all the way to the point where he goes scorched earth? So I think that answers the question. They just decided that yeah. he, wouldn't, You're he right. wouldn't make it known that he wants out, so they didn't feel compelled to trade him. Yeah, and now they're dealing with it. And then, now, I mean, listen, now, I mean, dealing with it. But again, I think they're in phase two of like, let's call his bluff again. I don't think he'll go any more serious than what he just did this past weekend. And I, I don't know. Yeah, I have a hard time believing he will, too. Uh, I do. You know, I mean, hey, at, at base. How do, you, how do you walk this back, though? How do you tuck tail between your legs and show up after all this is out there? How do you do it? He's a very prideful person. Yeah. I, I, how? And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. He just is. A lot of guys playing in the NFL are very prideful. How do you say, oh, well, they got me. <laughs> I yield. Take the king and knock it over. You win. I, I, I just don't see him doing that. I, I, I know. Well, I could see him kind of finagling a way of, hey, I'm not. Yeah, there's things I didn't like and I'm not happy and. He'll find a way. He's very smart, as we've seen in that in the past. I mean, you've mentioned it. I think he can probably, if he does decide to walk it back, he'll find the right way and tune to do it. He will. You're right. And he'll probably, Mike, you, you make a good point, too. He'll probably do some charity stuff and things like that to lessen the blow of everything as well with it. He is very calculated. There's no denying that. I mean, the other thing I just come back to is, you know, hey, one, is he willing to go scorched earth and make this a real public fight and really, you know, squeeze the Green Bay Packers? Hey, number two, you know, I know there's still going to be teams that are willing to trade for him right now or things like that. He is Aaron Rodgers, but man, so many of these teams have already made their bed and are kind of getting cozy and sleeping in it, going like, this is our team this year. You know, so like I said, he took those options away. And then the biggest thing to me here, too, is, is he just... Man, are you willing, again, as much as I get disappointed with Green Bay and not going all in on Rodgers, are you really going to, you know, give away or leave a team that's, you know, on the cusp of Super Bowl? Yeah, maybe maybe not really a legit Super Bowl contender without Aaron Rodgers, but still, he's got to be thinking like, man, we, we, I mean, we were this close last year. We could get back. There's no doubt. We could win it. You know, you're really going to give that away, like you said, at the end of your career, maybe three, four, five years left. We're really towards the end of the prime and special things. That's where, and I know he's aware of legacy and he wants to be, you know, the GOAT and all those type of things. That's where I just, I, 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 I don't know if he's going to be willing to retire or just totally walk away and give that away. I just can't imagine him doing that. Well, there's two different things there. There's retirement and giving up the rest of your career. And then there's trying to finagle a path to Denver where who knows how good that team could be. That's the team. Yeah. Constituted. If Aaron Rodgers gets plugged in as the quarterback automatically, there's a risk there, but there's a hell of a potential reward. There's a lot that you said that caught my attention. And one of the things, and Matt Casey mentioned this in my ear while you were talking, as it relates to the path back to Green Bay. We could see a situation where Aaron Rodgers, as part of the broader effort to win the fan base, say, basically, yes, there are issues between me and the front office. There are no issues between me and Matt LaFleur. Yes. There are no issues right. between me and the team. There are the players. There are no issues between me and the fans. So I'm coming back to do this right. I'm coming back to do everything I can to deliver a Super Bowl. We'll deal with my issues with the front office after the season. Because if you frame it that way, yes. if you do it just right, right. then – as he wins games, he rallies support. It becomes like a weird. Fan, yeah, fans deserve another title. Situation. Like, I'm going to do it you for know? you guys. 
where the fans get caught in the middle of it and the two parties involved are manipulating them. And there's nothing the front office can do to manipulate them during the regular season. If Rodgers comes back and he's more motivated than ever with each victory, with each step they get closer and closer to the Super Bowl, they they are are on his side and they see his side and they become converted to the idea, if they aren't already, that uh, that the team is in the wrong. The front office is in the wrong and Rogers is in the right. The problem is, right now, what's unfolded since last Thursday, there are some fans, at least the ones I deal with anecdotally, that have been yelling at me via email, all caps, screaming at my eyeballs for years, that the Packers uh, are right and that and that you, why are you trying to create trouble and you're wrong about Aaron Rodgers and now they're starting to kind of pivot the other way. They're going, and yeah, they're, they're, they're looking at Rod. You mean they're going? They're more, looking at Rodgers. Yeah, I, I agree. I was going to say they're like making a mess. No doubt, I agree. I, I the, the 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 public opinion has swayed back to where early last week. You know, we actually had this conversation, I think, a little bit where I just went, man, I think if Rodgers wanted to do something or anything like that, if he did it the right way, you know, public opinion's on his side. But it's not anymore. It's definitely not. It, it's it's gone the other way. He, I do think he angered people, not only Green Bay fans, that this became an issue and everything like this, but just even just the normal NFL fan, I think, feels a little bitter towards Rodgers that he kind of like hijacked the, the draft weekend to a degree. You know, it's going to come off and look a little selfish to to those people, the casual fan, things like that. And yeah, I don't I don't think he's, you know, in, in favor with the public here or, or up in Green Bay with the way it looks over the last four or five days. Let me say this as the owner and operator of an NFL based media outlet. I have no complaints. I have none whatsoever. Keep it coming, Aaron Rodgers. Keep doing whatever it is that you have to do in order to make this news continue because it's great for our business that's for sure it's not great for the betting business the folks at points bet have removed the over under win totals for the packers and the denver broncos yeah hmm. so man How about that yeah well and, and what's that tell you that tells you that somebody somewhere knows yes. that if this is going to go down yes. it's not going to be the raiders it's definitely not going to be the 49ers at this point. Nope. It's going to be the Broncos. The three teams that he's had on his private wish list for I don't know how long, at least days, maybe weeks, 49ers, Raiders, Broncos. Maybe the Rams. I think it's weeks. Point. You know, the, the thinking is he wants to get to the West Coast. Yes. The Packers aren't going to keep him in the conference. I, I think folks have started to come to that conclusion, and there's no other spot right now. Right. Although, you, you mentioned rosters being set. I think teams would. Yes, be I know. I said that too. But yeah, you're right. It's Rogers, so to they're still going to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's just you know they're hey. just getting cozy in the bed they made is what I was kind of saying to where they're going to be like, man, we just set our team. But okay, you're right. They're still going to call. It's Aaron Rodgers. Let me ask you this. Yeah, we made the point last week how Jeopardy became sort of a pawn in this chess match between Rodgers and the Packers, and you wonder at what point the folks at Jeopardy are watching this saying. Is this a guy we really want to be dealing with for the next 30 years? <laughs> right. Do we want to be dealing with do him? We, do we want Turd Ferguson? <laughs> you never know when it's going to flip to Turd Ferguson. That's the problem. Right. What if, what if you're one of these other teams and you know, you've you heard about they know. You know, Aaron Rodgers, a little prickly, a little hard to deal with. Yeah. Is he so good that you just don't care? Right. That, that's it. Mike, everybody knows. They they know what Aaron Rodgers is. There's, there's no doubt about that. I've had this conversation with – enough people over the last few years in the NFL that yes, you know, it's, it, Hey, good guy, smart guy, little different, you know, going to challenge you, going to question everything you do, all those type of things. Yeah. It could be a little weird to coach here and there, but damn, he's Aaron Rodgers and he's good. And that's what it's going to come back down to when it all, you know, boils down to the, 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 the point at hand here, but like the Broncos thing. Yeah. That's the one I look at Mike. And I'll say this, Again, I'm not into breaking news or doing anything like this, but I think I did tell you uh, the Broncos were a team about four or five weeks ago. I had heard from somebody I really trust in the NFL that was associated with Rodgers. Now, I I understood it as it was something that would happen after the 2021 season, that that would be the team that might make a play for him, and he had his eye on them. So it was, you know, uh, a, a natural fit that way. But it makes sense. We talked about it a little last week. That defense, those weapons, everything like that. 
And hey, if the Dolphins were involved in the Deshaun Watson conversation, they still got a whole damn crap load of picks they can trade away if they really want to make a play here for Aaron Rodgers too. So those are two teams that at least just jump out to me at face value to say if they want to get it done, they can get it done. One big question becomes how intent he is on being west of Texas because yeah. there aren't a whole lot of options. You got the Chargers, no. The Rams, no. The Seahawks, I still think John Schneider, Packers shareholder, well, should entertain the possibility of a flip-flop of Russell Wilson seriously. and Aaron Rodgers. I still think that that's worth considering because it solves both teams' problems. It does. Although it introduces different problems for both teams as well. The Packers would have to give Russell Wilson at some point a gigantic contract, and the Seahawks would have to assume whatever – issues the Packers have because I have a feeling John Schneider runs the Seahawks the same way that that the Packers run the Packers because that's that's where he grew up in sure. the, in the business so why do I want a guy that has an issue with the front office when I run my front office kind of the same way the Packers run theirs yeah no I, I mean it, it's a valid point it is you know it's 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 different people and at least they haven't scarred him like the Packers front office so you know again it is an interesting thought I have thought about it too I brought it up on my podcast yesterday just going I mean if they really don't want you know Wilson and they really don't want Rodgers yeah I mean well you could you can make it real easy make the flip you're right you got to worry about the contract situation with Wilson that's going to want to rise here and then with Rodgers where where you'd be different there is you just have to go well you know I don't know how long he'll be here for us That'll be the big the big thing. So they'll both have their issues to deal with, but it does make sense at a base level. There's no doubt. I just do you think either team would be willing to do that? Uh, I, I just I can't imagine. I think it's going to take a lot of work because you're trading one problem for another. It's just a different problem. Yeah, that, that's yeah. the reality. And I also think there's a broader issue at play here as NFL teams try to resist the proliferation of the NBA mindset uh -huh. where you have players who are taking over their careers. Right. And, and I think the league at large, the teams generally are looking at this saying, this isn't good for anybody if players have this much power. Right. So I think that's part of the resistance too that would go between Seattle and Green Bay because yeah, you'd be you'd be getting a different quarterback to plug in, but you also would be for two major players giving them what they want and pushing the pendulum closer and closer to NBA, not NFL, which I don't think the teams want. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.